Kia ora, Connect Church, so good to be with you this morning. Imagine, imagine if we as a church could give away $1 million to our community, not just once, but every year. Imagine if we could do that, like, like significantly bless the community every year not, uh, for generations to, to come, to make things possible for people that right now are facing impossibilities. Imagine if we could do that. I mean, things like, I mean, this week, I don't know whether you saw it and, uh, hey, I want to do something to, to help, but, but imagine I, the food bank, they put a thing out this week, and of course, we're, we're working with the food bank, but they put a thing out, a request on the front page that, that said they need a new home and they need $150,000. Imagine, imagine if we could say, hey, that's taken care of. Imagine if we could say that, that that's, that's done. We, 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 don't worry about the, the, the building. We've bought it. It's paid for. It's done. Imagine if we could do something like that. Is, is, is such a thought even possible? Is it even, even possible? And today, this is the second part of our future series as we intentionally build towards our miracle offering next Sunday, and as you know, as a church, we don't talk about money or, or giving a lot. It's just something we have purposely decided we will not do. It's just, it's just been f- for years now. That's just something we just won't do. And so if you're visiting church today, I want you uh, to know that you're a, a, in a part of something we do only once a year. And uh, uh, again, it's, it's important that you understand, even as I'm talking today, that there is no pressure, there is no compulsion to give. But for us who call Connect Church home, we are completely committed to resourcing the vision that God has yeah. called us to, which is what is to connect people to Jesus and their uh, purpose. And so once a year, we unapologetically, unapologetically create a space and a place for those who call Connect Church home to prayerfully and carefully consider sowing financially into our collective future as a local church. Why have we called it a miracle offering as opposed to something else? And uh, we, we've previously called it a sacrificial offering. Why have we called it a miracle offering? I, I said I, this week I would explain the int- intentionality behind the use of that term. And when we use the term miracle off- offering, let me firstly define what it's not. Let me firstly define what it's not. It is not and in, is in no way to be understood as some kind of prosperity preaching promise. I want you to clearly understand that. I am not standing up here to say, what's that miracle you're believing God for? And I don't know why I'm doing American. He can probably figure it out. <laughs> what's that miracle you're believing God for? If you just give, if you just give whatever that miracle is, you just so somehow God's going to give it all back to you and you'll get your miracle. I am not saying that and somebody say amen, amen. to that. I don't want to be that kind of church. So that is not what we're doing when we're talking about a miracle offering. Please understand, when I use the term miracle offering, the miracle I speak of is simply the connect story. That's it. Meaning if you know the story of this church, of this local body of believers, you know it's a story of the miraculous. It's a story of God's miraculous provision over and over and over again. Uh, Today, you're seated in a miracle. The church building, this building, is a miracle. The land on which this building sits is a miracle. In the 1980s, a very, very wealthy man, a multi-millionaire business man who was a part of our church, gave us 50 acres of land. They gave 50 acres of land to the church trust, which is now prime real estate, of course. And I don't know about you, but who does that? I don't know if there's anybody else. Yeah, I've been given that. It was miraculous. It was Amazing, this land stretched from Mazengar Park over there to the Shrig Station over there right up to the existing expressway over there. Who does that? What type of person does that? 
I, I remember the day when we signed the deal for the land. We'd hired a Cessna, a few of us, and we flew down to Nelson where the businessman uh, was now living. He'd moved out of the area and was now in Nelson. And I remember flying down in the Cessna, and some of you might have heard this story, but to those who are new, you have not. And so as we, we, we flew down, we signed the deal for uh, for the land, and I was, I was there. It was like amazing. How, wow, someone's just giving us 50 acres of, of land. And you've got to understand, when my other pastor's friends hear about this, they're like, please, Lord Jesus. Who does this? Who, who, who has this else has this happened to? And so we signed, and I want to tell you, the devil was not very happy when we signed that deal. How do I know? Because he tried to wipe us out within half an hour of signing the deal. I remember getting back into the Cessna and we started up and I was sitting in the front seat of the Cessna with the pilot. And as we were, we were pilot taxiing out onto the, to the runway, there was a plane, another plane, a big plane, Air New Zealand plane with its engines on full bore. And as the little Cessna went behind it, the Cessna started to fly all by itself. And it started to pick up and I could see the pilot going red in the face and stressing out. And so then he turns into the, to, to face the aircraft because it was trying to throw us. And so as he does that, then the plane starts going like this. And then, then you can understand, I started to get nervous at that point, especially when the propeller starts going. <laughs> and it made a louder noise than that. But as it went into the ground and the pilot goes, get out, get out. And I'm going to tell you, I got out. I'm going to tell you. I was, I was, I was like, I was, yeah, always listen to the emergency procedures when you're on an aircraft, I want to tell you. So I, I, I was out, I was out of that thing so fast, and I want to tell you, why, why, why did I get out of it fast? Because I've watched movies, I know what happens to planes when they, they do the boom, I was like, I was out of there. But we ended up having to hold that, that, that down the fire trucks came and everything. I mean, we, we could not use that plane, it was out of uh, action. I, I think the devil was not too happy about that. But I want to tell you, there's no stopping what God wants to do when God wants to do. So can I hear an amen? And there, there is no stopping what God wants to do. And so over the years, this land has uh, been developed and it's been uh, worked on. I just, uh, you can see here, this is Realm Drive. That is Realm Drive just starting to be formed right there. And so over the years, and David Rigg, one more time, you're getting two special little claps today, David. <laughs> David Rigg uh, made that happen. So he, he's been here, you know, went to, no, I won't say how long. He's been here like forever, and it's just like a part of the church having it to come, and so uh, having it to become all that it was. And of course, that ended up, with the, if you drive around here, you'll see the streets are named Realm Drive, Sovereign Way, Harvest, Court, uh, Crown Hill, and uh, so on. We named the, 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 the streets after the city of gold, amen. But, uh, but, 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 but we've got to understand, God, God was at work here. What we are part of is a... A miracle. And the profits from the subdivision pretty much completely finance the building that you are now sitting in without putting the burden on the people. This building itself was the National Factory, if you remember National, not National National Party, forget that. I'm talking about the National Factory. They used to make TVs a long time ago. That factory closed down in Pyrrha. The church bought it. We dis disassembled it and then brought it all back here and we store it in Albert. I don't know if Albert's here. Albert, somewhere, he, he wasn't coming to our church then, but he is now. He's actually now. The building was stored in his warehouse across the road. And then they took, the builders took the Lockwood, cut it in half, and pretty much doubled the size of the building uh, that existed and reassembled it in the shape that it's in now. Everything that's a part of what's happening here has been miraculous. And like I said, this kind of stuff doesn't happen. The, the, the miracle, of course, continues. The miracle continues with the motorway miracle. If you've been here for the last five, six years, you'll know about the motorway miracle. You know, you, you know we had all this out here. It was just swamp. Look at it. That's what it is. I just got that off Google. Earth. It was swamp. It was, you couldn't work. it was Blackberry. It was just a mess of hills and sand. There was massive hills out there. You couldn't, you wouldn't be able to see out there because of all the stuff that was growing. But we know what one day as they started building the expressway that I ended up meeting someone on a plane and that person was talking and said, it's very serendipitous that I've met you today. We were just talking about you. I'm going real fast because I've got a lot to get through. <laughs> but it's very serendipitous that I met you today. And then a few weeks later, we end up in the boardroom down at the Mackay's Expressway thing. So with the executives there saying, we've made a mistake with 70,000 cubic meters out calculated. We need sand and you've got sand on your land. Can you give us some of that sand on your land? And we know the Bible says, don't build your house on the sand. And so you can have our sand. What will you do for us? And they said, we will do all the development. We will flatten it out. We'll do everything. We'll build you two lakes, two ponds, a whole lot of cycle tracks. And guess what? 
we'll do it for free. We'll do it for free. It's like a million dollars worth of work. We'll do it for free. But then there was a Chinese guy. And there's a Chinese guy. He tried to stop what we're doing. He's in the final meeting trying to wrap it all up. And he's just about to say, what do you guys want? And I can't do this because uh, here's the thing. God moved on the Chinese guy. As he's there to stop us, uh, the, the Lord spoke to Chinese guy and said, you need to give them all, everything that they're wanting. And so Chinese guy did that. And then here's, here's the good news. Then the Chinese guy got saved and he's part of the church. He's part of the church today. Hallelujah. Oh, and people used to say, does that Chinese guy really exist? He exists. His name is Wei. I don't know if Wei comes to the next service. No way. Yes, Wei. I'm telling you. It was a miracle. It was a miracle. And so we know, we, uh, we know that and all of that. Uh, was done. But here, here's the thing you've got to, got to know. It was not just us who thought it was a miracle. The community thought it was a miracle too. Why? They put us on the front page of the newspaper. And I, I tell you, as Christians, it's hard to get on the front page of the newspaper. We were on the front page of the newspaper. I was a little bigger then. <laughs> I think that must be because it's stretched. I'm half the man I used to be. Come on, somebody. It's just, but, but, but they acknowledged it too. A deal made in heaven. They could see that somehow God was at work in the midst of this. This was a miracle. I looked up the definition of miracle, and there are many, but I like this one. An extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. Here it is again. An extraordinary event manifesting divine intervention in human affairs. Affairs, and I just go, Yep, that's pretty much sums up the journey. This is the work called Connect Church. It certainly, I can say, has been helped by some extraordinary events that look to me, anyway, like some divine intervention. And from this place, this soil, the uh, truly the miracle continues and uh, contributes to impacting lives, it continues to impact lives, not just. Locally, but, but nationally, through our leadership, through new life, both here and New Zealand and overseas, we continue as a, as a church to see churches strengthened right across New Zealand. We continue to see churches uh, strengthened just at the beginning of the year, being, being able to lead open heaven for the Wellington area and getting churches from all over the area. We continue to see churches strengthened right across the country. It's what we do. We, we continue to see leaders trained. Just a few weeks ago, you were part of it, 70 or so people from all around the country as we trained they say, well, ex some existing black power members, amen, hallelujah, God's doing a work. And, and, and to be in this place to train them and equip them, the work continues. We're, we're, uh, a church is planted, children fed through Sari Saturday, and, and, and uh, again, just incredible. I'm, I'm, let's believe God for $10,000 this year. Can I hear an amen on that? Let's let about three of you. It's like, okay, I'll try. I'll let, come on, let's believe God for $10,000 this year because we can feed them for a whole year. Souls saved. We're seeing it. Music that ministers. Our music's been sung. Just, just yesterday, seeing a post, hey, we want to sing this song in our church. How do we get the details of that? Youth reach through our storm initiatives and uh, ministry supported, and even things like Tanika, and I'm just putting this out there, you know, last year we were able to give them an old van that we had from our Connect uh, Kids Ministry, but can I just say, and I'm saying it out, don't tell anyone, but I'm just saying it, I'm putting it out here, I want to buy them a new van, like a completely new 14-seater bus, so I'm saying it, Peter, I'm promising it, we're going to do it, and we're going to make it happen, I don't want to just say it and keep it myself, we want to be able to the tremendous work that Peter and Mary do at Tanika, the tremendous stuff that you do helping people break their addictions. Come on, we, we just honor the work that you guys do. We're going to get you that bus. We're going to get you that bus. We're going to make it happen. I want to be able to do that. Amen. Amen. So what God has done here, this is a miracle. That is the miracle in miracle offering. And so this is why I'm asking you to consider prayerfully and carefully sowing into, investing into, as we seek to continue the God adventure we together are on. And of course, if you look out there and you go out the back after the service, we still have six hectares, 15 acres of land to develop out the back there. And a little while ago, I felt the Lord, and I know some of you on the Dream Team will know this, I felt the Lord rebuke me. I felt the Lord, which is not a pleasant experience, by the way. I felt the Lord rebuke me in, in regard to this and, and was like, what are you doing? He's like, I've given you the land. Miracle. 
I flattened it off and got it ready to, to build. Miracle. I've got it ready to build. I've got it all done. What are you going to do with what I've given? And I, I was reminded of the parable of the talents. And even today, I, I went in and something I hadn't seen seen before. I just, just this morning, looking, looking at the parable of the talents, and, you know, talent speaks of uh, uh, finances, I guess, back, back then. But even as I looked at how the parable of the talents started in Matthew 25, it says, again, it will be like a man. That's a, well, this is an old Bible, man. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Been well used, amen. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. And I'm like, I've, God's like, I've entrusted my property to you. And not only that, you, you know the story he gave to one, fi- one five, one two, and another person, one talent. And we know it says that he gave it according to their ability. And friends, I want to tell you, when we've been given that land, it's been given according to our ability. God's not given that and saying, ha ha, that's just you. No, no, he's given it because he expects us to do something uh, with it. Can I hear a good amen on that? And so some people are going, that's like a half plaque because we're like, what's he going to say? <laughs> You're stressing me out, pastor. But I want to tell you, God's been speaking to me and rebuked me in that thing because here's the thing, as I, I, as I looked at that parable and I start to see I start to see the person who had five turned it into ten. The person who had two turned it into four. The person who had one, what did he do? Nothing. It wasn't that he lost anything. It wasn't that it, that, it, that it all disappeared. He just did nothing. And God's like, you, you've, because see, here's the thing. We've had a plan for like 20 years. I've showed this picture. I think it's been up. It'll, it'll come up. But I've showed this picture of the business park. And I've been showing it like for 20 years. I'm sick of this picture. 20 years, and that's what God's saying. Excuse me already, can you get on with it? Yeah. And so, so the challenge has been, look, I, 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 this is just, I, I've been struggling, God. I'm, I, what, why? Because what happened with the man, with, with the one talent? What did he do? Why didn't he do it? Because it says, because he was afraid. Yeah. Jeep, did you stop him be already? No. Uh, the, the, he said, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. And I've got to be honest, sometimes when I think about what God wants to do out there, I'm afraid. Because <laughs> I'm like, freak out. Let someone else do it. But I felt the nudge of the Holy Ghost saying, no, you do it. Do something. Start something. And I want to tell you, again, we, we decided many years ago that we're just not going to sell the land. See, I could sell it. I could sell it. But what's that going to do? That's just going to benefit us. So what can we sell it for? for? We can probably sell it for, 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 for. What can we sell it for? Well, it's probably worth $4.5 to, to $5 million. And you go, wow, that's awesome. No, it's not. That can buy a couple of houses in Auckland, amen, hallelujah. I mean, that can, I mean, you can't do much with that. You can't do much with that. And, and again, if part of the thing, that that's what we've done there. And although that's built all of this, it doesn't have any ongoing, make any ongoing difference. And a part of what we are believing for is that this place is to be a legacy, not just for this generation, but for future generations. So what can we do to create that? What can we do to help that happen? That's the dream. See, the dream has been that we want to create an ongoing income for the church's future. And I started by saying, imagine. Imagine if we could create a continuous stream of income, which, which for the church would help finance, finance things like the auditorium without putting a burden on the people. Like I said, imagine along with that being able to significantly bless the community every, every year for generations to come. Imagine if we could give $1 million away to our community every year. That's the, that's the dream. But for me, it was just like it's too big. It's too hairy, audacious goal. Is it even possible? Is it even possible? And this is where I felt nudged to take action by God's rebuke. I, I felt God nudging me. Earlier this year, we as the trustees engaged a company called the Property Group, TPG, to even see if a dream like this could be even possible if it could even could it become a reality or is it just ridiculous is it going to be a reality or is it just something that is ridiculous i want to know tpg based in auckland they've got offices all over the place all over the country but we asked them to do a feasibility study to create how can we create could is it even possible can it even be done to create an income that continuously comes in to bless generations to come give us different scenarios i mean they handle large projects urban design, all that type of thing. They work for government and all different big 
organization. We were recommended them by Christian Savings. The head of the, the company is a believer. He's a part of what's Harborside, now Kingdom City. In fact, is right now they're handling the Kingdom City development in Auckland. They've had some miracles there. They're building an auditorium, 750-seater, $26 million that is under construction right now, and they are handling that, making that happen. And so we're right now in the middle of doing that. We're right now in the middle of figuring out and seeing the feasibility of is such a dream possible? See, I'm tired of showing the same drawing for 20 years. We need to do something. So is such a dream possible? The answer is yes. The feasibility study so far has shown that it is possibly possible, plausibly possible, that with the right mix of scenario of of residential apartments, homes, business, and stuff that we could be an annual or get an annual t- return of approximately three to four point five million dollars every year. Don't look at that picture for too long; it'll do your head in. These are just scenarios. These are just one of the options that they're presenting to us. And I go, "That's cool. What's the catch?" People over the years have said to me many, many times. Pastor, we need, just need to build that auditorium. We need to say, come on, we need to build that auditorium. Here's what you've got to understand. Just to build a 500-seater auditorium just to, is in the realm of $12 million to $20 million. So how many know we need a miracle? Yeah. It's between 12 and $20 million. And let me say this, I will never put that burden on you. I will never. I'm just saying it right here. I will never put that burden on the people of the church. I just don't feel that's right. It's like, God, you have given us that. We need to do something with that to help us do it. So I want you to understand that I'm not, I'm not taking an offering today to pay for, for that. That's not what we're doing. And see, it's important that you understand that. In fact, when we brought the TPG guys down, they came and spent a, a few hours here and they walked around the land. When they first said it and looked at it and looked over what needed to be done, they said it will probably take about $120 million. So now that it's down, can I just say that it's now down to 60 to $80 million. If it's 60, I've just saved, come on, 60, or what is that? $60 million. Come on, let's thank Jesus for that. But that's what it's going to take. What's it going to take to see that return? A miracle. What's it going to take? It's going to have to, we're going to have to send. It's not like we're going to borrow 80 million. You can't do that. It's about who knows, there might be a government. When this highway opens up, there's a government department that says, oh, we need a building and we put that there. And Hey, could you build that building for us? But it's about getting ready for that to happen. All of these processes have been a miracle. And so it's about getting ready to enable that to happen. So nothing's set. We're still talking, zooming, dreaming, looking at option scenarios. But there's no doubt a miracle is needed. So we, in a small way, uh, beginning our uh, business park. I was hoping to tell you this morning, but I can see my time. Time is out. I'll tell you next week. But we have a building right now under construction in Auckland. It's being built right now. And I will tell you what that is next week and how that begins our business park and how it is underway. Because our heart as leaders is to carefully steward the gift and talents of the land that God has miraculously given us in a way that will not just benefit us now, but will benefit future generations yeah to come. Can I hear a good amen Amen. on that? And so this is a story of miraculous provision over and over and over again. He has done it in the past and he will do it again. On Monday, I pulled this out to our staff meeting because I'm like, it's, it's, you know, and after I'd stopped hyperventilating, look at this. So the, I, I, I said, let's pray. Let's put this on the table. Let's pray because we need God to do a miracle if this is to take place. And so we did, and someone prayed, I don't know who it was. Well, we need more millionaires. Oh, amen, hallelujah, showing up and, and just doing like that. that because it's going to take that kind of crazy stuff to happen. Lord, we need more millionaires and whatever. And we'd finished the meeting, went upstairs. And we just, uh, we'd had another meeting, one, one of that we do a lot of meetings on Monday. And as the meeting's finishing, I could see this person looking through the glass. It's kind of awkward. And I could see this person looking through the glass, kept staring through it. I'm like, who is that? Anyway, Catherine knocks on the door and basically say, David Lucas is here. The man who gave us the land is here. I haven't seen him for years. I just started to think the parable of the talents where the master comes back. He says, what have you done? What have you done? 
we sat down for two hours and just chatted and shared and he didn't know anything about the money. He was just over in Greytown at, at, at a wedding. And he, he, he was just, I, I literally, I haven't seen him, I don't know, 20 years or something. Well, Anita's saying 30 years for him. Last time we, you saw him was in India. He came over to India to visit us. But here he was, and, and to be able to share, and it was like we just prayed, Lord, send us millionaires, and here's one just turned up. Uh, and, our thing, and he wrote us a check. No, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. Oh, but that, wouldn't that have been a cool testimony if I could have said that? He's just paying for the whole thing. Amen. May it be so, Lord. Hear our prayer. <laughs> I don't know. It'll take a lot of the stress out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But again, just for, for, for him to come here and do that, we were able to share the motorway miracle and all of that. And I remember when we were talking about the miracle, does this Chinese guy really exist? And we, we, we've shown way. Oh, yes, he does. And I know I've been talking about this guy for 30, 30 years, and he's been through his own journey. He's had his ups and downs. But this is the man, David Lucas, who gave us the land, who made what we are doing here today possible. Isaiah 32 verse 8 says, A generous man devises generous things, and by generosity he will stand. As he left on Monday, I reflected. His obedience to the Spirit of God has enabled us to impact thousands of lives. He's enabled. He didn't know what was going to happen. He didn't know if we'd manage it well. He didn't know if we'd be able to steward it well. He just gave it. He was, it was, just, he, he was obedient to what God had said. And his general obedience, his generosity and obedience became our miracle. And because he obeyed there, we are able to be here today. And so I guess as we approach the miracle offering next week to those who call this place home, I'm asking you, would you, like David, pray and obey? how you might sow into that which God is doing and connect as we face our future together, as we work and connect to not just reach this generation, but the generations to come. As we help the generations to come, connect to Jesus and find their purpose in Him. That's the miracle. That's what we want to do. Would you stand? And I've got through that. That was good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you. I appreciate your patience. It's not always the easiest things to talk about. But I pray I've stirred your heart. And that which God wants to do as we move into the future. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus some praise.